Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are, and welcome to Paul in Perth's Cancer Update 100. So we've made it all the way to 100 in um, in not that not that long. Uh, it's it's been quite a journey, and the journey continues. So I just the topic of today's video is one that um, cropped up a fair bit in the comments of my previous video, uh, which was a not not related to uh, cancer updates. It was a book review. A lot of you said in the comments. Yeah, Paul, but how are you really? Um, and I need to address that that question um, because the, the people that have been making those comments are correctly second guessing that I'm actually not doing very well. Um, and I do want to acknowledge that uh, I am I am struggling um, with the psychological aspects of um, of what's going on in my life. Uh, the recovery the recovery has been very very slow. So I'm now. Next Friday, so exactly a week today, will be three months since my operation on October 26. Uh, I I am going for daily walks now, and uh, at the moment I'm walking 1.3 kilometres, and um, and I'm a bit puffed. So that's where I am now, um, which is a, which is a fair way improved on. I can't walk 100 metres without without um, being out of breath. So we're definitely getting there, but three months to be able to walk 1.3 kilometres, which is not even one mile, it's about 0.8 of a mile, I think, uh, is is slow. And that's been really frustrating. So uh, there has been that going on. I've also, it is getting better over time, but I still get lightheaded if I stand up too fast. Uh, I suspect that is a function of the fact that I'm still on blood thinners, because if you remember, I had a pulmonary embolism and that means that I need to stay on these blood thinners until I have a clearance CT scan in about a month's time, I think it is. So until then, I'm still on blood thinners and I suspect that's what, what is making me still get lightheaded if I stand up too fast. As long as I go from uh, lying to sitting to standing with three seconds in between each of those phases, I don't get lightheaded. But if I go straight from lying down to standing up, yeah, I get lightheaded and I need to, I need to um, get my breath before I can carry on. The other thing I've been having is what I think my, I don't know whether it's a form of um, peripheral neuropathy or whether it's just plain old bad circulation. But what I have been getting is pains in my feet um, that my feet feel really cold, even though when I know that um, they are definitely um, not very cold. And I, I've i spoken to a few health professionals about it. I haven't spoken to an oncologist about it though. And the, the word I'm getting is, Paul, you've been so sedentary for such a long time that you've, you, you've got poor circulation now and you need to get that circulation improved um, for, the, um, for this to, for the circulation to improve. And um, there we go. And, and that'll result, that should resolve it. So I've been doing walks each day and um, Caroline has been joining me on those, which is lovely. Let me try and get that right. Oh, maybe I'll hold it. Uh, and um, and, that, and that's, been, that's been that. The other thing is it's been difficult to, to love my colostomy bag. So I've been trying to find ways to love my colostomy bag. Uh, luckily for me, there is the West Australian Ostomy Association, and um, I've spoken to some people there. And next, let me let me hold this. Um, next, oh, there, oh there's there's Kaz, there's Cassie by the way. There you go. We're actually at Cassie's house at the moment, so if you're wondering why there's a different background, um, we're at Cassie's house today. We um, she had some rental. She rented her house out while she was overseas and while she's caring for me. And um, the renters left last week, so we're we're just back into a, a relatively empty home, and we're um, we're fixing things up there. But Caroline is there, dutifully working from home. So, yep, she's she's working away. So um, so that's quite good. Uh, so yeah, so I'm finding it hard to love my colostomy bag, but I have contacted the WA Ostomy Association. I've spoken to people there. Um, the main message I got today. Uh, the, the lady asked me, have you given a name to your colostomy bag? And I said, well, I haven't really, but one night when I was with Caroline and the bag had puffed up because it had a lot of gas in it, 
I said to Caroline, oh, I'd better go and take care of Pouchy because the pouch was fully, um, fully inflated. So um, this lady from the Ostomy Associated started referring to my colostomy bag as Pouchy. So I guess my ostomy bag does officially have a name now and it's Pouchy. So, so there we go. And the main message she had for me today was the colostomy bag works for you. You don't work for the colostomy bag. So if it's not working out the way you want, you need to fix it and you need to take responsibility for it. And it was, she, she, we were later talking on about um, drinking beer and I haven't been drinking beer because it, it um, causes a lot of gas and a little, and a bit of fair reason, probably half the fluid or maybe not quite half ends up in the bag. So having a beer has relatively quick and relatively annoying um, side effects because you need to take care of, um, of the waste product of, of that beer. And it's not as uh, nice and easy as just going and having a wee. So she said, um, you know, you've got to decide whether you're going to continue to drink beer or not. And the consequences are on you, but you own them. You have to you have to get that colostomy bag working the way you want it. So um, she was she was getting across to me that that you know I need to exactly that I need to own it. So um, so that was the message for today. Uh, there every month they have an open day. So next Saturday I'm going to be going to the WA Ostomy Association open day, and they have a new members uh, forum or I guess or, or support class that runs from 12 till 1:30. And then from two o'clock onwards, they have um, a games afternoon. So uh, next Saturday, so tomorrow and a week more, um, I will be going to that uh, that day. So I'll have I'll have more news there. Another reason I've been uh, really down is I'm uncertain about my life expectancy. And as you can imagine, this is actually something that weighs on anyone's mind quite a bit. So. I'm, I'm gaining weight. So um, I actually, I'll pop, pop up my weights just there. So sorry, Caroline, I'm gonna have to block you out for a little bit, but um, those are my, those are my weights. <laughs> and um, so as you can see, I'm continuing to gain weight. I'm gaining weight at about, I think in the last week I gained 800 grams, which is um, just under a kilo, which is um, around about two pounds for those of you in the US. So I'm gaining at the moment about two pounds or about 800 grams a week, which is which is lovely. I'm, I'm actually starting to now think, oh geez, when I get to my target weight of, you know, around 80, 81, 82 kilos, um, I'm gonna have to remember to back off and, um, and not continue to gain weight. Um, I suspect that won't be a problem though, because I've, uh, certainly the case in the last few days, I don't have a very um, pronounced hunger hunger pain um, signal. So like last night, I, I really had to force myself to to eat uh, even, a, even a small meal. And I, I then had to pay attention to eat the protein bits because the protein is more important to me than the carbohydrates. So um, by, by the end of dinner last night, I was actually forcing the spoon into the rice and, and chicken and forcing that into my mouth. And it was, it's it's not a it's not an easy thing, but it's it's what I have to do. Uh, but I'm uncertain about my life expectancy. So, I the the surgical team at the end of my surgery said, um, "Yep, we're pretty confident we've got it all. Um, you should you should be right." Uh, but then when you delve a little bit deeper, their definition of everything's fine, that's beautiful, isn't the rest of your life. It's five years. And then when I looked at the statistics, it was, I think something like, generally for pseudomyxoma peritonei, was 80% survival at two years. But remember, I had the highest PCI that you can have, which means I probably have much less than an 80% chance of lasting five years. Uh, but I have, um, I have really nothing to go on at the moment. Uh, next, next Friday will be three months since my operation. So that's when I'll be able to get my first blood test to find out what my current CEA and CA199 scores are. 
So that'll be my first uh, indication of anything that, that might be awry. Uh, but I am told that even if the numbers are a little bit high, it may not mean anything if it's a slow growing tumour. What is important is to watch the numbers over time. And if the numbers are consistently rising, then um, your cancer is getting worse at that rate. So um, I'm, I'm just in this really funny period where I actually don't know how long I'm going to live and, and therefore I don't know how to plan my uh, medium and long-term futures. But what I will say is I've been going out of my mind, being stuck at home, um, you know, watching Netflix and whatever. So I, I, I made the, the decision that I am going to attempt at least to go back into the workforce. Uh, so Caroline opened up Seek and almost immediately uh, found a job for, as an IT support technician three days a week uh, in a, in an engine, at an engineering firm not that far from where I live, you know, actually walking distance. And she said, hey, you know, this might be what you want. It's three days a week. It's work that you'll find really easy because it's IT, IT support and um, why don't you apply? And I said, well, I'm really way overqualified, but yep, you're right, I will apply. So I did and so I applied yesterday at maybe 10, 10 or 10.30 in the morning and in the very early afternoon, I actually got a phone call from that company um, in telling me that I had been shortlisted. And um, she spent a, a very long time, like well over, what, what would it be, Cassie? Like an hour and a half? It's a good hour. Yeah, it was an hour to an hour and a half on the phone. And HR people don't spend that long talking to you unless they're actually thinking you're a very strong candidate. And while she was on the phone with me, um, she closed the pool. She closed the... Um, ability to apply for the job. So in her mind, somewhere in her list of candidates, and turned out she had, I think, 97 candidates had applied in the three days that that, that ad had been online. Um, she seems to be confident that she's got somewhere, someone in there that she believes will be able to do the job. So in terms of that particular job, uh, the HR person told me that they're going to give my resume to that uh, IT administrator today, so they will read it today. And if if he's adequately impressed with me, then I might be having uh, an in-face interview um, next Monday. But they may not. They may, the the IT manager may not um, uh, like my resume, or there could simply be a better candidate. And to be, if I'm quite honest and upfront, there could easily be a better candidate because. Uh, I have disclosed to them that, I, that I've um, recently recovered from cancer and they've indicated to me that the mind, some of the mine sites they work on have a, um, a pre-entrance medical that I will actually fail and I won't be allowed onto certain sites that they've got. So that immediately means I'm not the primo candidate. Uh, and then there's also the fact that I'm, I'm way overqualified and they want me to stick in the role. So when you stick someone that's overqualified into a role, um, there's always that risk that they're going to, going to find a job that, that, well, that they'll get bored basically and that they'll move on. So I've got to recognise those risks and we'll need to talk those through in the interview next Monday if I'm lucky enough to get one. But what I would like to say is you guys have known me for a long time now and you know my strengths and weaknesses. So hopefully you think I'm a good communicator Hopefully you think that um, I'm quite good at making instructional videos, uh, fixing cars, uh, that I'm easy to understand and and you'll just have to take it from me. I do have a degree in IT and I do have industry certifications in project management. So what I would like to put out to the world, to the 21.8 thousand of you, um, I'm really pleased with that number by the way, um, is if, if you think you've got a job that I would excel at, and I, I don't want just a job. Please only contact me if you think you've got a job I would excel at and that I would enjoy. I want a job that I can turn up to and smile. I don't want a job where I'm just, you know, either, you know, just getting on with the grind or, you know, it's okay, but it's nothing special. If you've actually got something you think I would excel at, 
then I've created a, um, a short-term use email address. So I'll pop it up on the screen um, on the bottom there. It's I can help at wingmanwilcox.com. So if you think you have something for me um, some, and something that I can handle, so I probably can't handle 40 hours a week, but I probably can handle 20. Uh, and, and yeah, and, the, and this job that I've applied for is actually three days a week. So that's um, 24 hours a week. Well, it's 7.6 hour days actually. So whatever that works out at. But if, but they may not, they may not continue to short, they may not interview me. The interview could go badly um, or there could simply just be a better candidate. You always have to accept that someone actually might be better than you. Um, and that means if you have something for me, um, please get in contact. If you're in Perth, then that obviously means I would have the opportunity to meet you in person, um, interview face-to-face -face and work at your office. If you're not in Perth, that means the job has to be able to be done remotely. Uh, but I don't discount that with all the technologies we have today, that is actually quite possible. So uh, yeah, please, if, if you think you've got something, I am going out of my mind being stuck at home um, you know, we're do, doing nothing, which is which is partly why I'm here today at Caroline's house. We're doing some home maintenance. And, well, I'm doing home maintenance. Caroline's uh, at work. But I'd love to hear from you. It, it would it would it would be lovely if one of the side effects of having this channel is that I I got a great job out of it. That that would be lovely. Uh, yeah. So look, that's that's where I'm at. Uh, so yeah. So in summary, um, how am I really? Is I'm struggling uh, mentally with my situation. I'm go. I'm a bit stir crazy staying at home. Uh, I'm. I've got anxiety about what my life expectancy is. Uh, what else? What else have I got on the list? I'm not loving my um, colostomy bag, but I'm trying to um, incorporate that into my life. And um, I've got a bit of peripheral neuropathy. So, so that's that's the truth of of where I'm at. So um hope that answers your question. So um uh yeah, I I think that I think that's me done. So um stay in touch, don't be afraid to put a comment down and Caroline, you wanna say goodbye to everyone? Bye everyone. Yep, there you go. So we'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot from Pauline Perth. See you later.